So today we put the micron filters on the gutters. The reason we're doing this on the hen house is because we have drip irrigation. They are rather easy to install once you figured out what they wanted. With the drip nipples, you have to be really careful not to get any debris in. So we figured the micron filters would help protect that. We still need to hook them up to the water tank. As you can see, the distance is about the same level. So anyone has any suggestions, our thought is to cut a hole in it, either the side of the barrel or the top of the barrel. I guess it's gonna have to be the side of the barrel and have the Y inside the barrel. Your suggestions will be greatly appreciated. Blessings. So I want to show you what this looks like when it comes. It's about $75 for six of these four foot panels. And it's very, very fine mesh. Walk it up closer. You see that? Very, very fine mesh. And it blocks out the small debris and the large debris. It's got a sticky tape on one side and you have to cut it to size and you tuck the ends in, which means you're gonna cut the sides off here. We found you just start it with the tin snips and then you can bend them back and forth and just cut down the sides here and just tuck it. And it works really, really well. It appears to at least. You have to clean your gutters out really good before you use it. Otherwise you're gonna trap all that debris in there. So been having some questions about what does the storage room look like, so I thought I'd give you a view. The back wall pretty much looks the same with the canned goods there and then of course we have the canned items over here. We moved the stove over here so that we could reach behind it and it wasn't always in the way. The blue barrel is mylar bags and then we have our feed barrels. This is our water system for from last year, table for the butchering, and then we have all of our buckets. Let me do that on the other side. So we have all of our buckets over here. I've got a bunch at the house I'm refilling. And it goes all the way up to the rafters and then of course all the way down to the ground. Too high. And too deep in some spots. It also extends all the way around the shed. At least to this half. Over here, what we did was we now have separate buckets. I actually like these buckets better. They take up less room. They're more stackable. You can actually turn these sideways and stack four too wide on it. Rather than, look at these, how much wasted space is between them. So we've got our year supply in here of razors and Laundry soap bars, that's the bars you make laundry soap with. Soap flossers, shampoo, cream rinse, deodorant. Deodorant's a big thing. You're really going to need some. And then we went ahead and hung up our feeders to get them out of the way. This uh, down here, the black ones, are our tobacco tubes for when we grow our own as a bar bartering item. By rearranging, we were able to get all of this empty space so that we can add more. Down here is toilet paper and an empty tub for rabbit food when the time comes. We put all our supplies that we don't get into very often up at the top, make it a lot easier. And then we went ahead and took the bookcase and we made our watering system and fertilizer shelf right here by the door. Didn't seem to take up too much room and it worked out really good. But I think it looks so much better. It really opens up the space. Now we're gonna have to redo it again because I have a freeze dryer coming. I am so excited. And so we're going to be doing our own freeze-dried foods. We're going to start by mylaring them. But what we want to do is take the space between the rafters and make number 10 can storage. And just have it come down through all the rafters. We can actually go behind most of these shelves here 
so we'll have a lot of nice storage for number 10 cans. I'm even thinking about converting these buckets into number 10 cans. Because with humidity, and if you got a whole bucket open without air conditioning, you might have issues. So I think number 10 cans is the way to go if you have the means to do it. Um, one of the reasons why I chose to get the freeze dryer is mainly for ground beef. Freeze dried ground beef is so expensive and it's so cheap to purchase comparatively. But I can do things like avocados and lemons and limes and of course the good old fashioned, and I think I have some here, ice cream sandwiches and ice cream. So I'm really excited about that. It'll be a nice learning curve and something new. I've got, uh, there is a freeze dry group out there that is really good and they're going to show me the ropes. So hopefully I'll do it right the first time. Well, I hope you all are safe and uh, any of you in Texas that had the rains and on the East Coast, I hope everything's okay for you. We're fine here. Uh, didn't get any damage from the rains. Our new fencing held up really well. Blessings.